Okay, so welcome to January's uh, monthly support webinar for the Wave 5 Trade Elliott Wave Indicator Suite. I want to do these once a month. Hi Trevor, how are you doing? Um, I want to do these once a month and it's a, it's, a, it's a time for you guys to ask me questions, whether it's about your specific um, Indicator Suite for your particular platform. Uh, again, I'm not... Uh, an avid user of TOS or TradeStation or NinjaTrader. I just know how the indicator suite behaves on those. Um, you know, talking about isolation of wave counts, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and we can go through that help. Maybe look at a few things. First off, I want to talk about uh, the new signal service that we've got for stocks. Um, I decided to do that as a standalone and have it as a membership service, guys, because the, the different types of data that come through these different platforms make it extremely difficult to um, put a scanner together for fifth wave trades uh, on multiple different time frames. It's just way, way too expensive. So what I've done... I've decided to uh, put the members area together. Very, very simple. Every day we get new scan results. Okay, so for long trades and short trades. And every day I put a video together, just pick one of those as an example. So for potential long trades, for example, today, you click on the image, you download the spreadsheet, you open the spreadsheet, which is opening up on another screen. I'll drag it over in a minute. And then it gives you potential setups on the weekly, the daily, and the 60-minute time frame. So these are scan results. Um, let me bring that over. And these are filtered slightly in that. Um, <clears throat> the, to, to be honest, Trevor, they all, all the platforms work the same for the same rules. So they all should look pretty much the same um, for these particular signals or for the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite. Personally, usability-wise, I like NinjaTrader NT8 better than, than the other two. And that's just my personal preference. It's very easy to use for me. Uh, I think TOS can be a bit cumbersome. Um, and TradeStation is not bad. Uh, but I prefer, just from a usability point of view for the platform, uh, NinjaTrader. Um, and I, I'll, we'll go through all three platforms anyway. So this, um, this signal service, every day I run a scan. And this data costs me uh, some in the region of about $300 uh, a month, okay? And because I use it for the platforms. Um, but what it does, it brings out and filters potential fifth wave trades on the weekly, the daily, and the 60 minute. It's a downloadable um, spreadsheet, and it basically gives you the symbol, uh, this quick description, what time frame, what sector it's in, the group, the volume, the year high, the year low. So these are potential fifth wave trades, and they're filtered in a way that the, the oscillator pullback has happened, and also the stochastic is in the overbought or oversold zone, depending on it's long or short. Hi, Ruben, how are you doing? So basically it gives you a starting point for that on long and short trades every single day. And it's only $97 a year, okay? So the homepage is here. You can subscribe on there if you're not already. Very simple, I've kept it simple, just like the, the indicator suite. I do a video every day. So today it was a video on Shaq, um, you know, and this came up on the scanner today on the daily for a long. So every day I just pick one and do an example setup where to do the, um, it's $97 a year, Pavlos, that's it. $97 a year, annual subscription. Um, so I do a video every day just to give you examples of how to set it up, uh, how to isolate wave counts, uh, where my entry would be, why I've chosen that entry, stop loss. Obviously, we've got automated target zones and just putting the risk to reward in 
and just I do a video every day. Okay, so that's that. So now I'm going to pull up the uh, Ninja Trader tweet for now. Okay, so TCO as recently triggered that came from um, from the indicator suite. Again, it's very simple. We isolate the bar count at the bottom. Okay, and now we're in a bullish trend. It's pulled back. We've had a wave four pullback. The oscillator is really good. So I'm just showing you this as an example. This was from one of the scan results. Uh, we quickly can put in the fib extension. So we go from the high to the zero, back to the high. And the good thing with Ninja Trader, another thing that I like about it, I can pre-do my templates. So I can load up the one that I've done for oscillator pullback and apply it. So we can see there the oscillators pull back uh, between 90 and 140%. The stochastic has come back down and crossed over. The wave force pulled back into the green zone. And we've got the entry there. Um, the entry was just above the high here. So we're in this already. Uh, let me just put my entry line on there. Okay, so we're only just in it. Ooh, triggered today. Uh, yeah, it did trigger today. So let me just put the green line in there. Again, I've got a template for this as well for my entry. Uh, this is why I like the usability of this platform. Pretty cool. Um, so you know, stop loss was just between the wave four and we got a decent uh, target up here. So this is just an example um, of uh, one of the scan results from, from the other day. It triggered today, set it up. Um, so there's lots of great starting points there and it gives you a starting point there. So um, Tiva, okay. The entry for a long, Trevor, is above the green MA, which is a special 6-4 moving average high. So it takes the highs of the last six days, averages them out, and skews it over four. So as you can see, the moving average is an advance. So we go for an entry for a long above the 6-4 moving average high. But also in this situation here, we have to consider this pivot point, this high here from this big range day. This was a rejection, so sensibly we want to be above that. Okay, uh, so you wanted to look at Tiva. Carlos, I would uh, usually earnings are a catalyst for a move within a trend. Okay, so if I'm already in a trade, uh, that is approaching earnings and it's close to target, I'll get out, okay? Now, if we are close to a trigger point and earnings is coming up in a few days and we're in a very strong bullish trend and the last two or three quarters earnings were good, had a bullish um, reaction, then I would still enter the trade because potentially you could, and I've done it in the past, and you've probably seen on the MTV Pro membership, on the daily swing trade uh, analysis videos that I do, um, you know, some of those we've tiptoe triggered for a couple of days, we've had earnings and it's gapped up into target zone, took profit. Okay, so it does happen and it does happen very regularly. Uh, so, sorry, Trevor, Tiva, what time frame are you on in Tiva? I've traded Tiva recently, had some good, good trades. So what time frame, Trevor, are you in on Tiva? Yeah, so this is the daily. I've isolated the bar count right down here at the low. Um, as you can see, we are potentially on a wave four pullback, okay? Now, there's still some way to go for this because you can see here on the oscillator, it's not pulled back to zero. Also, the stochastic has not pulled back in the oversold zone. 
So this could be a false pullback. If it doesn't pull down here, and I would say a good support level, and I know we've got our zones. Let me just put a... Um, so we've got to consider this zone here. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so looking left is one of the biggest rules when you're trading this type of strategy. We can see here we've got this high and we've got these lows in this consolidation period. Okay, so a pullback into this green zone, into this sort of $19 price, if that finds support, if I was already in a position, I'd wait for it to start to move higher again, and then I would add to the position. Only if I was backed up with the uh, oscillator pullback between 90 and 140%. And again, if you've got this already in and you've got the indicator suite, you literally just um, put in your 90 and 140 so let's go to the zero line here and just let let it play out it might be a false breaker a uh, false pullback sorry um, but i i would just leave it and let it let it go see what it does ah oh, un unbelievable windows updates happen when you don't want them to happen Okay, so that's where our 90 to 140 percent is, guys. So, so Trevor, you've got to wait until that pulls back in there, and you'll see this price action come back and find support in there. Maybe go sideways again, because it's a big support resistance level. You'll see the stochastic most likely come here on the um, oversold, turn back up. Once this price action starts to turn back up, we, there's no um, target zone yet because we haven't pulled back. We haven't pulled back and formed a way for yet. But that's where we are with um, um, Tiva. Uh, I'll get you the link, bear with me. Oh no, that's the wrong one. The link to the scanner subscribe page. Is there, Pavlos, okay? Uh, you want me to look at the 60 minute for Tiva, Trevor? Let me have a look. I think I spotted something on here um, a while ago. So I need to change the data series. I want 60 days back there. Give me a bit of data. And let's have a look, see where we are. So just, um, so this is, yeah, that's where I saw this today. So we have potentially got a fifth wave move on the 60 minute. Again, I think this is on the scanner for today as well. Um, so on the 60 minute, we've had a wave four pullback that's found support in the red zone. So we've still got a 75% probability is going on and getting to 2350. Okay. So the stochastics already crossed over. It looks like it might be coming down again. So we have to be careful with entry here. So let's zoom into this section here and look for... Uh, a sensible entry strategy. So I think this, this came up on the scanner today for the 60 minute for a potential long, or the other day, sorry. Um, once the stochastic moves out of the oversold zone, it doesn't appear on the scanners, guys, but it's still a good trade, as you can see. So you've got to take note of the scan results each day Find the ones that look good, set them up, and then put them on your watch list. Do the setup and just keep an eye on them. So for me, for entry, I'd be above, where's my data window? Well, there it is. Uh, what's that high there? 
So I want a 2142 or something like that. Okay, I want a 2142 entry or 43. Um, So it, I use the stochastic on the on the on same for all of them. It's a fourteen three three. It's a simple, slow. It's not a fast stochastic, Jerry. Uh, it's a fourteen three three stochastic, and we have the twenty for oversold and eighty for overbought. Okay. <clears throat> So the low, the wave four there is 2014. So we just need to be below there somewhere. Um, and it's all about the risk to reward. So don't try and fudge it. You put your sensible entry in and your stop loss first, and then you measure your risk to reward. And then uh, depending on your risk appetite, whether you go for it or not. So let's put the risk to reward on now. Um, so I go from the stop loss to the entry and then just bring it along the entry here. 2142 is the entry. And then I've just, again, I've got another template here. You can tell I use NinjaTrader a lot. Um, risk, uh, sorry, risk to reward, load apply and there you can see we've got the 1 to 1 1.6 into the target zone guys so Tiva on the 60 minute again it was another scan results from the scanner membership area but you've got to look sensibly at entry here the stochastics turning down we've gone pretty flat today we did yesterday get this high but it failed came back down and went flat so we've got to be sensible and get above there where it failed before, even maybe above this high here at 2161 if you want to be ultra conservative. But it does seem to have found good support on the 60 minute Tiva. Uh, it just needs a bit of juice, a bit of volume to push it up through that 2142, 2150 sort of level. Uh, and I think you'll get a good reward. So if you wanted to go above 2150 as a, um, a conservative entry, Trevor, and trade this intraday, and um, you would probably look for this to get to target in about seven days ish. Yeah. Okay. When you're trading 60 minutes, if you're trading options, you're talking from seven to 10 days on a 60 minute. Um, it can get there a lot quicker. Yeah, so yeah, uh, I mean, it can go in two days, honestly, if, if it breaks out properly and goes and get there in two days. But I was, I mean, again, you've got to think of the so many different options and strategies, it's unbelievable. Uh, but you've just got to think, I don't want to hold this more than five days, for example, uh, and then work out your options strategies for that. That's trading on the 60 minute. If you're going to trade a fifth wave on options on the daily time frame, you've got to look in really around 20 to 25 days ahead for an options expiry. If you're going to trade options on a weekly, you've got to look 20 to 25 weeks ahead. Okay. Those trades take longer, but I tell you something, you start getting some of those in the bank and they start really bringing in some great profits. My inner circle will tell you that because we've just made some really great trades. Okay. So that's Tiva. Um, let me just go to um, right. So this is a trade that I've done with my inner circle. This is a weekly time frame. Okay, the rules are exactly the same, and I'm you know. I've been trading this strategy now for over a decade, and this is why 
my uh, the indicator suite has developed from my trading strategy. Okay, I'm not a software developer. I paid somewhere to do it. I told him what I do and I, what I want this to do. And this is on a weekly time frame. Okay, we entered quite aggressively here at just above sixteen dollars. That's sixteen oh seven was the entry exactly, and we're in target this week already. Okay, so this is a quick weekly trade. Sometimes it can take up to 20 weeks, uh, but this is a big mover and they do move big. So it goes to show you that the results on the scanner, whether they're for, um, for dailies, weekly, 60 minutes, they are still good. Okay, so we entered about here. And we're in the target zone right now. Okay, and I know some of my inner circle have taken profits on that. Uh, but again, we look at the oscillator pullback on this weekly chart and it's, it works. Okay, so we, we draw it in when we get to the setup here, fib extension. So we go for the highest point in wave three, we go to the zero line, we go back to the highest point in wave three. Again, I've got this on a template, oscillator pullback, load, apply. And as you can see here, when we had the wave four pullback, it was quite deep into the, into the red zone, but it still found support in there. Uh, stochastic crossed over, oscillator pullback between 940%, perfect setup. Going long above the high of this previous week and outside the 6-4 moving average high, and then one, two, three, four, five weeks, and we've hit target, okay? So it does work on lots of different time frames, and this is a real trade, okay? This is a trade that my inner circle have taken, um, and some of them have already taken profits on this. I'm still hanging on for a little bit, because um, it did try and get through $23 today. But I just wanted to show you that it's quite, di it's quite diverse, the indicator suite, uh, because it works on weekly, daily 60 minute to be honest it works on five minutes uh, but if you're sort of uh, stocks traders i would say don't go any lower than 60 minute yes it is excel trevor the spreadsheet that you get in the signals is an excel spreadsheet okay and you can download it every single day uh where is it now bring it back so this is the one for today so it's, an ex, it's just an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, these are real scan results and I put them in every day. Uh, this was the daily uh, potential long trades on the daily today and on the 60 minute, these were potential long trades on uh, the 60. I know Apple came in today. Um, so, you know, and it obviously changes every day and there's, a, there's another spreadsheet for potential short trades as well. Uh, and for $97 a year, it's nothing. I'm taking the data costs on, uh, and you guys are getting that raw data with a bit of filtering for the oscillator pullback and stochastic, and you're getting some starting points for potential trades. Not all of them set up very well, uh, but I would say, you know, if you can find even just three or four good trades every single day, you know, you, it's going to be a really good starting point for you. So does any, <clears throat> okay, so where do I uh, choose to start? I, on the long, I'm looking for a low. So here we've had a bearish move. We've had a low. I've, you know, I would have had this signal on the indicator signals for a potential wave five because we've had the wave four pullback. Um, but even if you come across this CNX uh, weekly here, uh, you go to the low, okay? And some of them do, James, yes, but be aware if the stochastic comes out of the over uh, sold zone on as long, so let's go to uh, TCO, for example, okay? TCO was on the uh, scanner. So Isolating it is pretty obvious. There's a low there. You isolate it. Okay. Now, 
this came on the scanner when it entered the oversold zone, the stochastic. If I run a, a scanner tomorrow, if the stochastic is out of the over um, sold zone, it won't appear on the scanner. So it's almost like uh, you've got to have a, um, a system where you look at those scan results every day, you quickly go through your charts, pick the ones, put them in your watch list, because this is still a good trade but it won't appear, okay, because the stochastic filter hasn't picked that up because it's sort of on its way, okay? Does that make sense? So you, you, it literally takes you probably 15, 20 minutes a day, go through quickly through those scan results, uh, isolate, see if you've got a good way for pullback, put it on your watch list because it may disappear in a few days as the stochastic starts to move away and uh, but it's still a good trade setup but i have to put some filters on so people get a starting point anybody else have any questions on the uh the signals membership or on the, the elliott wave indicator suite do you want me to look at any particular stocks or uh, if there's futures traders there or or forex uh, just let me know, we can have a look. Yes, uh, it's going to be recorded and uploaded. Right, ENDP. Okay, so let's have a look at ENDP. Now, not all of them are good setups, okay? You've literally got to put the ticker in and see where we are. So we've got a low, we've got a double bottom here. That's, um, that's not really nice, okay? On the daily. Okay, there is a pullback, uh, but I, I don't like that. That's gone too deep. So what it's done... The scanner's picked it up, but actually the pullback's too deep and it's gone below these lows here, Ruben. So you would just discount that. You'd look at the low, you'd isolate your bar count, and we can see now longer term. So you could always as well, if you wanted to, go to these highs and see where the wave count is. For that, it will pick the low, the fifth wave low, as you can see here, went through the target level a bit. And this is where we are right now, okay? So again, this is raw data. The fill, you know, we're looking for pullbacks. We're looking for oscillator. As you can see now, the oscillator has pulled back here, okay? And the stochastics pulled back. But for us, it's not a, a really good uh, fourth wave trade. Uh, I think it's early days and we've got this sideways action here, which is no good there, okay? So you just discount that one, okay? Brilliant. That's it. It's simple as that. No problem. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I was just looking at GPS actually, because I'm in this trade as well. Um, it seems to be running out of juice. We've just just breached the high of this wave three now. Not quite at the target zone yet, uh, but I'm going, I, I want to get out of this this week. But this indecision doji today, we just need confirmation tomorrow. It could go higher, but if it starts to pull back, I'm, I'm going to uh, put. Um... So Pavlos, uh, how many bars do I look back on? I don't necessarily, it doesn't matter what data set you look at. You've got to look at the lows to isolate your bar count, okay? Um, so it doesn't matter if I change this now. So that's three, that's one year. So if I do um, 730 days, we go back two years, okay? It's still the same, okay? It just shows you that previous bearish trade, got the wave five, got a wave one, wave two, 
and it's exactly the same trade as where I am now because that is the low. Okay, so I would say on a daily time frame, look back no more than two years. Same for the weekly. Uh, no, James, it's not because indexes don't quite behave the same as stocks. Uh, one part of the scan scans are looking for that um, the data for those pullbacks okay and they're easy to find on an individual stock because they're in certain cycles okay and those Elliott wave moves are better in a certain cycle but I can speak with the developer and see if we can sort something out but I don't I've got no plans this quarter because we that at the moment, all the development now is on a multi-charts version, and then we're doing MT4. Um, so with index, do you want me to look at a particular index? Uh, I can look at that now if you want. Let's use... Um, okay, so when do I close manually? Um, uh, yeah, if you was in my trade room, you would hear me talk about that all the time. Um, so I'll look. Uh, yeah, I'll look at them in a minute, James. I'll bring on. Um, I'll bring in the um, a different platform on on TOS and bring that in. So um, I'm just trying to think now. GPS. You will always find, uh, Ruben. You will always find that. Pushing through this previous wave three high is always a bit of a problem. Okay, seventy to eighty percent of the time it will push through. But the idea with this, uh, uh, let me show you uh, with a trade that's been on a bit longer. Uh, CMI, isn't it? CMI. Oh no, because that's a trend reversal. CENX on the weekly is a good example. Okay. So right here, right now, we entered at 1607, just above there. Okay. Now, trailing stop at the moment. So this is how I'm managing this trade. I've got locked in profits at 1% of the account balance just underneath this support level here. Okay. So <clears throat> we had a good push through there. Then we had an indecision week. Then we had a big week and it closed. So that is where I'm protecting profits right now with a trailing stop. Once this week closes and it's a higher high and a higher low, I adjust my trailing stop to the week behind. And then when the following week closes, if we get a higher high, higher low, I adjust my trading stop behind that one and so forth. So that's a really simple man, uh, man, trade management strategy, staying sort of one candle behind when that one closes. So whether it's a daily or a weekly, you wait for the next one. As long as you're getting higher highs and a higher lows, the momentum's still going and you uh, literally you're just waiting for those support first support level to lock in profits and then you're just following as the next bar closes you're staying one bar behind does that make sense that way you're going to make more money because you've got profits locked in and you're not going to uh, get a, a quick pullback it takes you out okay brilliant so let's pull in the sink or swim Okay, so you're going to have to give me the ticket to put it in here, James, because I'm not used to think or swim. So I need uh, one of the e-mini futures contracts to put in there. Uh, what do I type in? Is it just simply ES? I don't know. Uh, nope. ESH18. Well, I don't think that works in TOS, does it? Uh, forward slash ES, yeah. So it's different for every bloody one. <laughs> it's going one way at the moment, isn't it? <laughs> Let's go one way at the moment. So we need to pick a time frame that's probably um, 
that's more tradable. Let's go to uh, 30 day, 60 minute. Okay, so at the moment you can see it's just going on those highs. So um, let me just, so it's getting used diff different tools on different, um, you know, that's already done that. So we've got the low here and we can see at the moment we're on this wave three. Um, oh, there we go again. Sorry, I'm not used to this. I have to remember to change the pointer. James, which uh, time frame do you trade on? Because at the moment, this is on a long bullish move, even on a 60 minute, when you've got to wait for a pullback into the pullback zone. Um, you look at it on a daily. Again, you just see direction one way. Five minutes, have a look at the five minutes. Okay, I'm going to isolate the bar count here because we, let me just, in, um, and I'll show you why. Okay, so big range bound period here, James, that's not a trend. Okay, that's the start of a trend. So in theory, I can isolate my bar count here, but then we've got another sort of pretty much range bound period and, and, a, and, a, and a thing to go to there. So initially what I do is, I discount that on the five minute, and I would look at that uh, bar count there, which is 2786. And on, on TOS, you can't click, you have to change the start bar. Was it 2786? Wasn't it 2786? Okay, apply. Or did I get it? Um, Okay, there it is. Okay, so now that shows you on the five minute, let me um, just change to the little hand, I remember now. So we isolated the bar count and now the software has done its job uh, and then we've had that wave four pullback and that was the, the move on the five minutes, just hit target today. So that was the trade today on the five minute. Um, so it's about looking a few days back, one or two days back, looking for that range bound period, which we've got down here on the left, isolating that bar count. I did it at 2783 or 2786, round about there. And then it's just a matter, once it's come out of this range, it's in a trend and the software does it for you then and puts that together. No, Trevor, it can't show inner waves, okay? It's way too complicated to program. Um, let me just, um, just make this bigger again. And to be honest, it overcomplicates things. If you keep it simple and you get the wave four pullback, you trade the fifth wave. Uh, and these are main waves. Um, so I just want to just look at this trend a bit more. So again, we isolated. One, two, really long wave three, nice pullback. Wave four found support, and then we'd look for an entry. Whoa, you could have gone aggressive around about 283346, and it just ticked the target level at 2844. Yeah, start the way. I'll put Bido, Bido on there and I'll do that. <clears throat> uh, we want to be on a daily, not five minute. Hang on. Oh, sorry. It's quite hard to. Uh, to use TOS. 
So when I'm moving my cursor in the top of this oscillator box here, you will see some figures in yellow changing. Now it's at 244. Can you see that, Trevor? Yeah, on the TOS. And if I move it to here, it's at 296. So let's just, for example, go back to here. That's at 205. So we click on the edit studies. We go to the Elliott wave. And our start bar, we just change to 205. Yeah. So we change it to 205, click OK, click Apply. Whoops. Uh, and then it changes it. It'll. Oh, there we go. So that's. So now it's isolated at those lows. I've got the wave four pullback. I'm already in the trade, as you say, uh, Ruben. Um, but you've got to be patient with these guys, okay? <laughs> you've got to be very patient. Not all of them go. So, yeah, forget the zeros, Trevor. Forget the zeros. There's that many zeros in it because if you go to a one minute chart, you can imagine every time you move, that digit changed by one. So you can have literally hundreds of thousands. So that's why it's all the way over to the right. So forget the zeros. Let me just go in a bit on here. So we are in Vidu at the moment. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Let me go to the drawings again. So we're in Bidu and it's pulled back a bit, but that happens, okay? Uh, with trading the fifth wave, Ruben, it's the highest probability move, but it's not as intense as the wave three, okay? So you've got to be patient. So you've got to stop loss at the weight just below the wave four. Now that is there for a reason. That is a major support level. And you could be three, or in this case, probably I think it's five cents below for the stop loss. So that's a really good stop loss position there. Okay. So once you trigger, you'll find it could pull back. Um, let me show you an example on um, on my in, uh, indicator suite here. Just I just wanted to show you an example of being patient. <laughs> um, where is it now? Um, oh, I've closed it recently. What was it? Um, let me just pull the spreadsheet out. Um, because I can't remember, I've closed a lot of winning trades this month. So I just need to open the spreadsheet for MTV Pro uh, just to see which one it was. No, I, you've got to be disciplined. I, I'm prepared to lose 1%, Ruben. I do not close it before that stop loss. And again, I can give you some very good examples on that as well. Okay. Um, so um, my winning trades for January, uh, I think it was LVS. Let me look at all those. 13.2% on the trading account balance for the uh, swing trades, trading the fifth wave. Uh, LVS, so I think it was LVS. Just gonna just check. No, it wasn't that one. PPG. Okay, I'm gonna bring. I, I'm just using a different software because I've already got it set up. But um, okay, I entered the trade here, Ruben. Okay, it came up. And it didn't like this previous resistance level here. And it came down. It didn't take my stop loss out. It was within six cents. It then came back up and look where it's hit, the target. Okay? This happens over and over again. You've got to be prepared to take those losses. 
my win rate for January is around about 96%, okay? Average is about 65 to 70%. So you will lose some trades. But I can guarantee if you panic and get out too early, 60 to 70% of the time, if not higher, they'll turn around and go high, okay? So you've got to be really, really disciplined with those. So with Bidu, there's loads of room. You know, we, we, I... I fully expect to this to step up, okay? So it's gonna have a, a step type trade where we're gonna go high, pull back, find a higher support level, go up, pull back, higher support level, and so on and so forth. Um, and that's how some of these fifth waves work. Re that's really how they do. Um, I'm annoyed I can't find that one to show you um, as an example because um, uh, no, no, no. The eat is new. Is it CGNX? Mm. I mean, that's just another example there. Look, we had the trigger, got the highs, pulled back, found the support levels. Going high again, it'll pull back, it'll get a higher support level here. Okay. Um, and then, you know, it'll just keep going. And then we'll pull back and we'll get a higher support level. And that's how some of these trade goes. But on the other hand, you get the GPSs. You've just seen that on the early wave indicator suite. They just go straight, okay? Um, and, you know, that's, that's how some of them go. Just got to be patient. So for me, uh, Bidu, still looking good. Isolated the bar count. I've had the wave three. It's pulled back into the amber zone. It's pulled away. I've gone very conservative with the entry above this high here. It's still in a slight profit-making position now. <clears throat> You're welcome, Ruben. James, wave fives are more are predictable, very predictable on the weekly, the daily, the 60-minute for stocks, okay? But you can, they are very good for, for futures, and Forex on lower time frames. But you need to understand the overall trend as well. You don't want to be trading against the trend. Okay, so let's just go back. But sort of ES, we're looking for long trades, aren't we? Because it's going one way at the moment. So when we go to ES, we are looking for those wave four pullbacks on a five minute. Okay, that's not going to happen on the daily for a while. But on the five minute, As we said before, today uh, we isolated the bar count. We have to do that again now. Uh, because we had this range bound period, at this here, 2785. So I'll go and do that again. Two seven eight five. This is why I like Ninja Trader a bit more because I can just click and do it. You can't do that with TOS. We've tried, it just doesn't work. Um, just give it a minute. Okay, so on this day, on the on Monday, okay, we were a range bound period. So you're trading ES on the five minute. This is how I would have played this. Okay, so let's zoom into this section here. So going range bound, going range bound on Monday. Then we start the move. Then we've pulled back and then we've started again. You should recognize that now as the start of a potential bullish trend on this five minute time frame. So you isolate your bar count just before this trend starts, okay? Because that's the start of the trend. And then the software will count these waves, okay? Um, and then you'll just wait for the wave four pullback, let it find support. And then if we zoom in here again, it finds support, moves out. You can go aggressive outside the 6-4 moving average high with your stop loss below the wave 4. So this is a five-minute time frame. It still works. We've then gone sideways and then broke up and eventually gone up there. Okay? So it works on any time frame. Uh, but for me personally, uh, I'm a bit of a purist. I like trading stocks off the daily time frame because that is the purest time frame. 
When you get a day, it has an open, a close, a high, and a low. You put a lot of those days together, you've got a trend or a counter trend or a sideways action for a breakout. You've got a true reflection of where that stock is in its cycle. Obviously, it's different for futures, for indexes, and for Forex. But for me, for the last nearly 15 years now, um, the, the majority of my profits um, have come from trading of the daily time frame, the swing trades, and also of the weekly time frame as well, um, because we get lots of great trades on those weekly time frames. So, and I treat it as a business. So my trades are like a sales funnel. So I just keep putting those good setups in and eventually we start coming out of the other side with sales, you know, with profits. Uh, all at different times because uh, on a weekly time frame, you might get a trade uh, that only takes five or six weeks like CNX and another one that might take 20 weeks. And then you've got some mixed in ones there with on the daily time frame. Some of them are taking nine days, 20 days. But as soon as you start pushing those in the funnel one end, eventually within 20 days or so, or even less, they start to come out of the side. Okay. Can you do the fourth wave fib on ES? Um, I'm on ES now on the five minute. The fourth wave is here, Trevor. Do you mean a different time frame? This is ES right now on the five minute. So the fourth wave fib came down to this level and then went back up, went higher again into our pullback zones. And we isolated the bar count down here. Did you mean on a different time frame on ES? These are fib levels anyway these pullback zones. Uh, but I can do the FIB if you want. It will match up. Um, I, so FIB retracement. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Drawing tools. Our oh, percentage. There we go. Right. Okay. So the pullback zones or are you talking from the wave three to the wave four? Which retracement do you want? Two to three, three to four. The, the indicator's already done it for you. Or do you mean on the oscillator? Right, okay, so. Bear with me. Oh, let me just go back to the hand. I'm going to pull the oscillator up. Now, the oscillator is not as accurate when you're on a five minute. It's better on a daily. Uh, as you can see there, the oscillator is too deep. Okay. And that's what happens on a five minute. Uh, so you're going to discount that. Again, this is high probability trading, Trevor. I can tell that you can tell that is below the 140. But what you've got to look at. And again, I think I mentioned it in the, um, in the boot camp with the indicator suites. Um, yeah, the, the, the fourth wave is deep um, on the oscillator, but in the pullback zone, it's good. On the stochastic, it's good. So when we start putting those things together, and I explain this in the entry strategy on the, in, on the, um, on the boot camps, it's about you're, you're allowed to, to have one, especially on a five minute, that doesn't quite meet the criteria. Okay, so let's check them off. The wave four pulls back into one of the pullback zone and find support. Check. The oscillator is too deep. No. The stochastic has pulled back in the oversold zone is turning up. Yes. The uh, movement as the risk to reward from the entry to this. Uh, target level is above 1 to 1.6. Yes. Uh, we're going to enter above the 6.4 moving average high. Yes. So everything stacks up except for the 6.4 move, uh, the 5.35 oscillator in this case. So it's still a high probability trade.
because the lower time frame you get, you, you get, you are sometimes you might get that deeper pullback on the oscillator because this is a pictogram, a, a cross-sectional picture of the difference between the five and the 35 day moving averages. Now, on a five minute time frame, what you will get is because you've had this very slow move up and then you've had this arched pullback, the, the five and the 35 oscillator are getting further and further apart in, the, in negative territory until they start to come back together again. Okay, because you've got that arching type wave four there, and you get that sometimes in a five minute. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, Ruben, I'm just going to get rid of uh, TOS and go back to the uh, to um, Ninja Trader if you don't mind. <laughs> um, da, 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 what was it? A or A or A Y? Sixty minutes. Change the data series. Oops, no, wrong one. Sixty days. Could go ninety. It's hard on the sixty minutes. Um, I think this sort of trade has already gone. Um, am I on the right one? A or A Y sixty minutes? Um, where have you isolated the bar count, Ruben? I'm trying to figure that out. It should be down here at the double bottom, and the fifth wave has just happened. 19th, 12th. Yeah, around here, yeah. Okay, so the entry would have been above the 6 4 moving average high. Uh, yes, uh, let me just finish this. Um, Raymond, and then I'll, I'll have a look at CL60 minute. 1430. What's 1430? What, 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 what am I looking at here? Well, I've isolated it here on the 19th at this low. Are oh, you using TradeStation? Okay, I'll bring that over. I'm not too. Uh, to good with trade station you might be able to help me actually <laughs> so uh, I need to format symbol go to minute 60 minutes 60 days back okay how do I scrunch this up? How do I zoom out here, Ruben? I've always struggled with this. Somebody keeps telling me, and then I forget. On the keys, that oh, okay. Oh, right, okay. I see. Ah. Now we, um, now I know. So I'm going to isolate it down here, yeah? So with TradeStation, we're clicking down here, and there we go. Okay. Oh, yeah, we've got a lot of more. We get a lot more corrections with TradeStation, I do see. I'd be careful of this one. Uh, let me just, and I'll tell you why. All right, so I need to zoom out in. Okay. 
Right. Can you see this bit here? Where on the 60 minute we get this. This is low volume, okay? So although this is setting up, it is low volume. So you've got to be careful here. We have the pullback, we have the target zone. But when you get periods like this, and we get these flat here, that's low volume. Let me just have a look on my, I don't know how to get volume on there, but I can look on my, um, my thing here. Let me just, uh, I just want to look what the daily volume is for um, array. Because it that means it can be quite gappy as well. So the average daily volume is around about less than 600,000. So guys, when you're looking at these potential trades, do look at the average daily volume, especially if you're going to try and trade off the 60 minute. When you see this happen here, let me zoom out. Am I doing it right? No, it's the wrong way. Okay. What I'm trying to show you is these 60-minute bars respecting these sort of lows and levels and the bouncing. That means there's low volume, okay? Sometimes you'll see this on a five-minute and you'll walk, you'll walk away from that trade because there's not enough volume to gather the momentum you need for a trade. Not to say it's not a good trade, okay? You've just got to be prepared that this may take some time, okay? So, again, um, I'm being cautious here because one of the one of the main things for an entry strategy on um, on this fifth wave move is support and resistance levels. Now, when you've got low volume like this, yeah, that's a brilliant level, but the next step up is there, and those can be gaps. So, and again, with this fifth wave move, you're looking to go through a price and enter you know, on a stock limit order, probably you know, um, going through that price with a plus or minus one or two. So with this one, it looks okay, but you might have to manually enter above this high here. So I would be looking at something like 526, something like that, around about above this high. And then you've got to work out your risk to reward, um, drawing tools, drawing. Um, so we're going to go stop loss, entry about there. It's only a one to one. Yeah, 535 is, that's quite high. And then you're going to be going into this resistance area here at 540. So we had this dip down. We came up, it failed, it went sideways for one, two, three, four, five hours, and then came down again. So for me, although you've had the wave four pullback, because of the low volume and this resistance period here, an entry at 535, you're, you're going long into resistance. So it's one of those ones you've got to walk away from, I'm afraid. I know it's hard to do, um, but personally, that's what I would do. Because if I were going to enter this, I'd be down here at 526, okay? And then I've got a 1 to 1, in, or 1 to 1 1.4 into my target zone there. Uh, reasonable risk, risk to reward. And I've got about a 0 0.5 to that uh, resistance level there. So if it does find resistance there and starts going sideways, I can get out of the trade and take a little bit of profit. But if I get in at 535, I'm too close to that resistance level. 
So if you're going to trade this, you've got to be aggressive at something like 526, 27. Okay. Brilliant. So uh, let me try CL on here now. I'm here. I can't remember what the. Um, can I get CL? Oh no, because that's that's Colgate. Um, I don't know what futures are on here. Yeah, let me just get rid of that. <laughs> let me uh, just pull over futures. Um, Futures one, and then go to oh, I think this is the wrong contract. Zero two eighteen, is that still right? Um, Raymond, are we still on? We're on March. Okay, I haven't idea yet. Are you, which um, which platform are you using? NY8. Invalid instrument. I think I might need to update the contract because I, again, I don't trade futures, so I don't necessarily, um, yeah. So I need to go into, I remember how to do this now. Yeah, I've just done that, CLO318. All right. I've got to update the, um, the list. Um, so I think it's in tools, instrument, no, it's not instrument lists. Uh, bear with me a minute. Yeah, tools, data management, that was it. Um, database management rollover, there we go. <clears throat> Again, I'm, I'm not, I don't regular look at them, so um, that should do it now. Bear with me a minute. <clears throat> I'm still updating. Let's close that now. Press OK. And let's then go into futures, CR2318. We'll just change the time frame a minute. So I, don't, I don't think I've got live data for all futures, uh, Raymond, purely because I um, I don't trade it and I pay enough bloody data charges anyway. Um, so let's see if we can now go down to the 60 minutes. No, I can't get 60 minute on here. Do apologize. Let me just pull over the TOS because I know I can get it on that. You 
You imagine how many platforms I've got. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it is uh, my data costs. I've just got to reduce them. <laughs> right, so um, let me just pull these down a bit. And then extend that so your chart will look something like that in theory. Um, let me just start that at zero and then go from there. So does it look something like that? Raymond, on the 60 minute chart, zoom in. Okay, so we are in a fifth wave move on the 60 minute chart now. And we should be in already. The entry was yesterday around about 63.69, Raymond. Um, why is that? The wave four found support, initially moved out, came back down again the day before. So if you were looking at it from yesterday, we'd be looking to break this previous high here. So around about 63.72 would have been the entry yesterday on this candle, okay? It would have dipped down again, but we're now at 64.54. It's not a bad trade for oil futures. So the entry would have been at 63.72. Uh, so we're nearly, you know, we're not, I think we'll get 100 pips out of this easy, out of this move. So is that what he was looking at, um, Raymond? Did, did you enter yesterday on this? Did you go long? Right, okay. So, you know, to learn from this, you've got to see that way for um, find support. It has that initial attempt to move out. You could have entered there, no problem whatsoever, because it came down, made a higher support level. It came up, it made a higher support level. It's come up, it's made a higher support level. It's come up, and that's what it does. Uh, you know, that's how fifth wave trades. A lot of them move. So price action yesterday, we. We, we got that little arch and then we pulled back, but we got a higher support level. Um, you know, and this is what we're looking for. Moving away from that wave four, we are looking for higher support levels. Now, let's see if I can put those in. So, um, drawings, no, that's pointer. Um, Arrow. So we look here, then we've got a higher support level here, and then yesterday we found higher support again. And then today we've come down, we find a higher support level there, and then we're moving up, and then shorter term we find another higher support level there. So these are positions, once this has happened, guys, this is a good example when you're trading this fifth wave. Once you're into profit and you're above your entry, okay, when we get a support level and it breaks the previous high before there, so at this point, move your trading stop to that support level. Let it ride, let it come back. Now we've got another support level, but we are not adjusting our trading stop until this high here is broken. 
So when this moves above this high, this then becomes our trading stop. But you really have to wait for that. Once that support level has formed and it's moving away, wait until that previous high and it's moving up now, uh, goes above there, and then you can adjust your trading stop. Okay? Okay, guys, that's it. We've had uh, an hour and 20 minutes. It's nearly 10 to 9. 10 to 9? Uh, yeah, 10 to 9 p.m., 8.50 p.m. my time. So hopefully it's been a good session. Um, Ray, any of those stocks traders that wants that signal membership, have you got the link or do you need it again? So again, that, the, the, it's the way it, it complements uh, access to my trading room. Ooh, blimey. Uh, hang on. It's my pre-market prep. Brilliant, Jerry. Yeah. Uh, so, Ruben, my, my trading room is called Paul's pre-market prep, and it opens an hour before the U.S. session, and then I take you in to the session 20 30 minutes then i leave you with scanners some really great scanners and then just keep popping in and out for the first half of this session then i close it at 1 p.m est um so i'm gonna have to can you email me paul at my trading buddy.com oops there is an at in there i'm on a wireless keyboard and it's got a little different layout and I'll send you the link okay okay brilliant uh, it's only $49 a month and I set up loads of trades pre-market breakouts uh, give me a few examples for a go let me just stop the recording